Hey Bookie, welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to talk about some books that I read recently. If you watched my October recap video, you know it went on pretty long because I had a lot of books and I had a lot to say about all of those books. So I'm trying to make that a little bit easier, a little bit simpler for November and talk about the books as I'm reading them. This is kind of a Friday Reads video except that I didn't read all of these books this past week. But these are all books that I have read since the beginning of November. And they're all nonfiction. So I'm going to talk about three books today. Excuse me. I'm going to talk about the first three books that I finished in November. And so this is kind of a Friday Reads video because it's being filmed and hopefully posted on a Friday. But also, it's kind of a close to book video, which I used to film back in the day where I talk about the three books that I read recently and this is kind of a mini review of those three books. So, this is one of those nice videos. So, the first three books that I finished in November. The first one was a book that I couldn't wait to start. I started it on the very first day in November and I read it in about a day and a half. This is Green Lights, Matthew McConaughey's memoir. And this is more than a celebrity memoir. Matthew McConaughey, of course, is an actor. If you're not familiar with his work, he did romantic comedy films in the back in the day. But he talks about wanting to be a serious filmmaker. He didn't just want to be an actor. He wanted to be a producer, and I'm not sure if he wanted to direct as well. But he wanted to be in the movie business and you know he started off as an actor and then he kind of got um, pigeonholed as a romantic comedy actor and he wanted to come out of that and it took him a while of turning down a lot of really great offers because he wanted to focus on something else but like I said this is more than just a slip this is more than a celebrity memoir okay you want to go down you wanted to be here you know if you're gonna stay here, you're gonna be, you're gonna behave, okay? Let mommy talk for a little bit, all right? So yeah, like I said, this is more than a celebrity memoir. Um, he talks about his early life. He talks about growing up and living in a family where they loved hard, but they also fought each other hard. And he talks about how his parents were violent towards each other, and they divorced and remarried twice and then stayed together until his father died but he talks about growing up and experiencing tough love from his parents and <sighs> he grew up with an older brother who was biological as well as his parents adopted a middle brother and so he was kind of their accident and growing up with that kind of unique dynamic and oh there's so much about this book to really love. Like, Matthew McConaughey in this book comes off as more than just a pretty face, you know. I don't know what you know about him, but one of my enduring memories of him is people talking about how he's this very, um, like, a kind of nudie, nudist person, where he's like a surfer dude. He's scantily clad and playing bongo drums and he talks about how that came about but more than that he talks about just needing to be free needing to experience life in everything that it has to offer and wanting to do that from a pretty young age so he talks about going to australia as a teenager after high school going to australia as an exchange student and living with a crazy family and even though he was experiencing something that, you know, there was almost no expectation for, that because he'd given his word that he would say that he endured. And there's just so much about this book to really enjoy. There's so much about Matthew McConaughey to enjoy in this book. But more than that, this is also a really beautifully, aesthetically pleasing book. And just like a book lover's dream, um, let's talk about how the book looks. So this is the dust jacket, which like you know it doesn't fit all the way. So it's just uh, it's like a present. It just kind of wraps around a little bit. And then this 
looks like a journal. It looks like your journal that you would write in because McConaughey talks about keeping a journal and the act of journaling, how it influenced him, how it changed him, how it inspired him, and what kind of things he would write in his personal notebook throughout the decades. But then this looks like the notebook that he would keep. And then, of course, the green light, the traffic lights on here. And just keep living, which you expect is his mantra and his signature on the back. So outside of the book is really beautiful. Then we have pictures. But they are added here like a scrapbook, like how you have pictures in a scrapbook with handwritten notes that go along with it. And everywhere here, it's, there are pictures of him and little notes that you expect that he would keep. And then, of course, there's this little symbol here, which he explains. So I don't want to give too much about the book away. I don't know if I've already given too much. But it's beautiful. It tells the story of a man turning 50 and realizing that he has something he wants to write down, something he wants to share with the world and share with his children and the generations that follow him. And it's such a beautiful book. This was a gift from Penguin Random House, um, and I just so love it. I want to keep it, but I'm also a little bit torn because I want to give it to a friend. And so I, at this point, I'm thinking that I'm going to keep this copy and just give her, buy her her own copy. This is beautiful, and I'm saying this because I think that you should also check this out. If you like movies, if you like Matthew McConaughey's movies, um, if you like memoirs in general not just celebrity memoirs but if you like reading about other people's take on life and if you like reading philosophy and seeing how other people internalize philosophical thought then this is a book that you would probably enjoy as well so yeah green light by matthew mcconaughey this is a brand new release so it's available now if you want to check that out the second book that i finished so far this month was Oak Flat by Lauren Redmiss, another gift from Penguin Random House Publishers. And this is the story of a family, but not a memoir this time. This is being written by a this is being written by a scholar. Um kind of a journalistic effort, but this author is a MacArthur Foundation fellow. So this book tells the story of a Native American family and generations of their family and how they interact with this place called Oak Flat, which is a um, piece of sacred property. It's at the top of a mountain in Arizona, and this is where this Native American tribe, Native American group, would perform a sacred ritual in which a girl enters into womanhood, and there is a whole festival and a whole ritual that is associated with that and they believe that their ancestors inhabit this space and so it's spiritual it's sacred for them but in the late 1990s or mid 1990s um, copper copper ore was discovered on this land and the land even though it was deeded not deeded no it's never deeded so something that i didn't quite realize until i was reading this book is that Native Americans inhabit reservation land, but they don't own the reservation land. So when we talk about how Native American land has been taken from them, this is really what it means. So the federal government allows Native Americans to inhabit this space. They've cordoned them off into reservations, and this is where they live, but they don't own the property. So they don't actually have the right to say what happens to the property. So like I said, this is some space that they've been using as sacred ground and ore has been found and now the federal government, along with two huge mining corporations, want to develop this land. They want to open copper mines. And please don't break my book. Thank you so much. Be gentle. Be gentle with the books. Okay, baby? Gentle. Gentle with the books. So back to Oak Flat. Native, Native American people don't own their land, the federal government owns it, so copper has been discovered on this land, and two mining corporations, international mining corporations, want to develop this land, so they want to transfer ownership of the land from the federal government to these mines, or mining corporations, so that they can start these copper mines. 
And while there is argument to support that developing these mines would increase the economy of this community, um, generally what happens is that when you open mines or industrial spaces for any reason, the people who get most of the jobs that go to the people in the community are low-level jobs, um, labor, laborer jobs. Um, the people who are making the bulk of the money, they're not from these communities. They import a lot of their high-level labor, executive labor. And so, yeah, um, it provides jobs for community people. But also the damage that will be done to the natural resources. The fact that this is sacred ground, you can't ever recover if you've trampled the land and destroyed the resources, you can't ever recover that. So in this book, Lauren Redness interviews and reports on what she discusses with the people, the Native American people. And so this book is, um, their reflection on their life, the way they live it now, as well as their, hypo their hypothesis on how their lives would change and what that would look like. Various members of these Native American groups have gone to Congress and testified, they have petitioned, they have done a lot to try. They're still there. Yeah, are you waving to them? So this records this teenage girl going to Congress. There's a record here of a teenage Native American girl who goes to Congress to testify. And what I really love about this book is it includes illustrations. The book is heavily illustrated. Um, it starts from the slide paper, the end pages, is that what it's called? It's kind of like a graphic book. But it's not. There are there are lots of pictures, but there's also lots of text. And oh man, I love this book. I want everybody to check out this book. It might not be for everyone because it is a little bit of a political statement. You know, if you are on the side of saying that these minds should be developed, then this book might not quite be for you. But I thought it was beautiful. I think the book is beautiful. And the colors and the shading you know, there's a representation here of a lot of these characters that we're reading and their families and we're tracing their ancestry. And so, you know, some of the pictures are bigger, some of them are smaller, and they're rendered so that you can see the history being represented here. And, oh man, I love this book. And then there are pages that look like this, where the author is talking about the, the source of the copper. So how the book starts is us reading about outer space and how copper really comes about in the beginning and what makes us think that we should exploit some of these resources. I love this book. I highly recommend this book. If you're still looking for recommendations for nonfiction November, this is a really good one to pick up. It is a short read because, like I said, there are lots of pictures and... It's not quite mixed media, but, you know, these pictures are also representing something, but it also takes up a lot of the space, so there's not as much text as you probably would expect from a book this size, but Oak Flat by Lauren Redness, A Fight for Sacred Land in the American West. Did I mention that this book is set in Arizona? Did I tell you that Oak Flat is a serene high elevation mesa that sits above the southeastern Arizona desert? And just in case you think that the book is completely biased, there's a section in here where she talks about Native American people who side with the federal government and side with the corporations and believe that this would be a good thing for them, that it's time for them to abandon some of these ancient practices, ancient rituals, and just kind of get with the program and move with progress. So Lauren Redness does try to give some kind of an even discussion point, but I love this book, highly recommend Oak Flat by Lauren Redness. That was the second book that I read in November. And the third book that I read, Anne Julian's Cosmos, Possible Worlds. And this is the sequel to Carl Sagan's beloved classic. And Anne Julian was Carl Sagan's wife. And together, they worked on the book as well as the television show that was on Fox and National Geographic. 
And so in this book, Andrian continues Carl Sagan's legacy or the legacy that they built together because she and uh, Carl Sagan, I said, like, um, they work together and they built up this, this legacy of telling the story of the world, um, the origins and where we are now. But in this one, she continues and hypothesizes about the possibility of the future, possibilities. So in this book, she really goes back through the history of the world um exploring what we know about the origins of earth as well as the universe and something that i really love about this book is she talks about the cosmic calendar where we believe that there and i use the word we very loosely <laughs> the belief is that there have been about 13 billion years 13 billion years of existence in this in this world. So, relating each one of those to about a, a month in the cosmic calendar, she's able to show how things have changed, um, imagining that each billion years is about a month um, in our concept of time. And she talks about what we have learned or what we should have learned from the universe as it has been but also what we need to know about the universe as it is now and our expectation of what it will be in the future if we act and also if we don't. This is brilliant. This, I think, is going to be one of my favorite books of the year. Um, Andrea doesn't shy away from topics. She talks about science. She talks about religion. She talks about philosophy. She explains things that I have seen and seen used, but never quite completely understood. The illustrations in this book are also really fantastic. This book... Hi. <laughs> So the illustrations in this book are a combination of real pictures from telescopes and other stargazing equipment, as well as artist renderings, artistic renderings, so artistic drawings of what we believe is there, but we can't actually see. All right, so okay. we're running out of time. You want to read it? Okay. So yeah, she talks about, you know, she gives us a time factor about climate change and what this world will look like if we don't do anything. So she talks about the history of plant life and animal life and water and our chemicals and the diversity of life and how viruses and bacteria act and what will happen if we don't do something. You know, she also talks about history and she includes art history in very interesting but very informative ways. She includes them in incorporating them in her story of the world. And Julian's Possible Worlds was a gift to me from National Geographic Publishers. And I have a full review of this one on my blog, runright.net, which I'll link in the description box down below that blog post so you can go check it out. I'll also link down below other places where you can go to check me out aside from here on YouTube, other places where you can go and support my channel if you so wish. So thank you so much for watching this video. We'll be back next time for another video talking about books in some way. Thank you and we'd love to chat with you in the comments down below. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you've heard about any of them otherwise and if you'd like to pick them up especially if you want to pick them up now based on what I said. So I'd love to chat with you down there. Leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye-bye.